Welcome to Cute Fast Track Series for API Recommended Practice 572 Inspection Practices for Pressure Vessels. In this lecture, we will discuss sub clauses 9.5 through 9.7 and highlight important information contained subclauses 9.6 to 9.7. Metallurgical changes and in situ analysis of metals in situ metallography can be used to detect metallurgical changes with portable polishing equipment and using replica transfer techniques. Hardness chemical spot, and magnetic tests are three methods of detecting metallurgical changes. Portable hardness testers can be used to detect faulty heat treating, carburization, nitriding, decarburization, and other processes that cause changes in hardness. ET, X-ray fluorescence, radiation, and portable light emission spectroscope instruments are also used for material identification. Hammer testing In hammer testing, an inspector's hammer is used to supplement visual inspection. The hammer is used to do the following jobs. To check if rivets, bolts, brackets, etc. are loose. To check for lack of bond in concrete or refractory linings. It is not recommended to hammer test objects under pressure. Piping upstream of a catalyst bed. Pressure and vacuum testing. When a pressure vessel is fabricated, it is pressure tested for integrity and tightness in accordance with the standard or construction code to which it was built. In addition to integrity and tightness, the pressure test can also result in beneficial stress redistribution at defects. When major repair work such as replacing a head, a large nozzle, or a section of the shell plate is performed, the vessel should be pressure tested. For code rules concerning pressure tests of in-service vessels, see API 510. The ASME BPVC, although a new vessel fabrication code, may be followed in principle in many cases. Before a hydrostatic test is performed, the engineer should determine if the support structure is adequate for the weight. If the vessel or its supports are inadequate for a hydrostatic test, a pneumatic test may be considered. When making pneumatic pressure tests, the recommendations set forth in the ASME BPVC should be followed. When testing pneumatically, a UT leak detector or soap solution or both should be used to aid visual inspection. It is important to understand that there can be a high consequence associated with the sudden release of stored energy if a pressure vessel fails during a pneumatic test. When pressure testing is not feasible, a vacuum vessel can be tested for leaks with evacuators or vacuum pumps that are installed in the unit and used to create a vacuum. Acoustic emission method can be especially useful for vessels of complex design or where the vessel contents cannot be easily removed to permit an internal inspection. ASME PCC2 Article 5.1 contains guidelines for determining safe distance based upon the calculated stored energy of the particular test. Blinds and or blanks used for pressure testing should be of adequate thickness to withstand the pressure that will be applied during testing.
the risk of brittle fracture during the test should be considered and appropriate precautions should be taken to minimize the potential for failure, particularly brittle failure during pneumatic testing. API 510 recommends that vessels be tested either at temperatures not less than 30 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 degrees Celsius above the minimum design metal temperature MDMT for vessels that are more than 2 in 5 centimeters thick or 10 degrees Fahrenheit above for vessels that have a thickness of 2 in or less. The test temperature should not exceed 120 degrees Fahrenheit unless the vessel material toughness indicates the need for a higher test temperature see api 579 to 1 asme ffs1 testing exchangers when testing a floating head exchanger with the pressure in the tubes removal of the shell cover will reveal the source if the leak is in the gasket stay bolts or tube rolls at the floating head this test will not normally distinguish between tube roll leaks at the stationary tube sheet and those at penetrated tube walls as these parts are not visible while the tube bundle is in the shell a shell test applied to a floating head exchanger with the channel cover off will reveal leaking tube rolls at the stationary tube sheet but will not clearly identify the source of leakage at floating tube sheet rolls or floating head gasket leaks. In most cases, exchangers that do not use a floating head are so constructed that a shell side test applied to the partially dismantled exchanger will enable individual detection of leaking tubes and their plugging. Tube condition assessment can also be performed using scanning detection tools. The range of tools available includes ET, remote field ET, magnetic flux, laser, and UT test equipment. If the number of tubes plugged interferes with the efficient use of the exchanger, the bundle should be retubed. When plugging failed tubes, a good practice is to pierce the tube for pressure relief prior to installing the plug in order to avoid pressure buildup in the tube which could become a safety hazard. When water cannot be completely removed, it may be necessary to add chemical corrosion inhibitors to prevent the potential for microbiological corrosion while the equipment is out of service. Positive material identification The owner, user should establish a material verification program indicating the extent and type of PMI testing to be conducted during repair, maintenance, and altering of pressure vessels and their associated components. Refer to API RP 578 for general information on material verification programs and information on PMI technology that can be useful in defining a program for pressure vessels. Refer to API RP 751 for additional information on the effect of residual elements re, on the corrosion behavior of carbon steel in hydrofluoric acid HF service. Review questions Question number one. What method is often used to detect metallurgical changes to the base metal? Answer is C. Question number two. What method is often used to detect carburization and decarburization? Answer is B. Question number three. 
in which of the following situations is hammer testing typically used today? Answer is A. Question number four. It is recommended to not hammer test. Answer is A. Question number five. Which of the following is not a purpose for a pressure test? Answer is A. Question number six. A pressure test would probably not be required after which of the following repairs? Answer is B. Question number seven. Acoustic emission testing is especially useful on Answer is C Question number 8 A pneumatic pressure test is performed on a large vessel. What is one way to determine the location of remote leaks? Answer is B. Question number 9. A vessel is being vacuum tested. What is one negative aspect of a vacuum test? Answer is A. Question number 10. What is major safety concern when performing a pneumatic test? Answer is B. Question number 11. A vessel is going to be pneumatically tested. It is important to establish a safety perimeter. Guidance for establishing a safety perimeter can be found in Answer is B. Question number 12. A pressure test is conducted after an alteration on a vessel that has a shell thickness of 2.5 inch. The minimum metal temperature allowed during this pressure test is. Answer is C. Question number 13. A pressure test is conducted after an alteration on a vessel that has a shell thickness of 1.25 inch. The minimum metal temperature allowed during this pressure test is. Answer is D. Question number 14. What is the most important concern when hydrotesting a large in-service vessel? Answer is B. Question number 15. During a turnaround. Many temporary isolation blinds are installed. 
What is one significant potential problem with these isolation blinds? Answer is D. Question number 16. When performing a pneumatic pressure test of a vessel, the requirements of which code should be followed? Answer is C. Question number 17. A shell side pressure test is being performed on an exchanger with a floating head bundle. The bundle is in the shell and the channel cover is removed. This test will show overall bundle integrity and can be used to specifically locate which of the following leaks. Answer is A. Question number 18. A tube side pressure test is being performed on a floating head exchanger bundle. The bundle is in the shell. Piping connected to a bottom shell nozzle is removed. This test will show bundle integrity and can be used to locate which of the following leaks. Answer is D. Question number 19. During pressure test of a bundle, a leaking tube is discovered. The other tubes are acceptable for a future operational run. The leaking tube is normally. Answer is C. Question number 20. How many tubes in a bundle can be plugged? Answer is D. Question number 21. What is a good practice when plugging an exchanger bundle tube? Answer is A. Question number 22. Before applying a high pressure hydro test to an exchanger's shell side, be sure to. Answer is D. Question number 23. After an exchanger hydro test, the water is drained. But some residual water can't be drained. What may need to be done? Answer is C. Question number 24. During repairs and alterations to vessels, who is responsible to establish the requirements for an appropriate PMI program? Answer is C. Question number 25. What document is useful in setting the requirements for a PMI program? Answer is A. Question number 26. What document provides information on the corrosive effect of residual elements on carbon steel in HF acid service?
Answer is D. This lecture is prepared by Samir Saad, and this is his profile.